let us now consider one more example of a many-to-many -many relationship. Okay, so there, there's a company once again. It's got many products, many orders. By the orders, we mean sales orders. Each order has some quantity of one or more products. So for example, order number 10 may be for, you know, 10 uh, chairs and 20 tables and 30 uh, cushions and five side tables. Okay, so it's one order, but it's got many different products on it. And of course, each product might be on zero order or many orders. Actually, it should be wrong. This is wrong. Each product might be on zero or many orders. Okay, so see the relationship here. Every order has to have at least one product, but a given product may be on zero orders or many orders. But of course, you may say, well, how can the same physical product be on multiple products? It can be on only one at a time. We're not talking about physical product. We're just saying this order has uh, chairs ordered on it. Well, some other order also has chairs on it, right? We're not talking about the specific unit of chair. We're just saying chairs in general. Okay, so here I'm just giving a different sort of an example for this. Here's an order. And I'm really going back in time to the time when the Coliseum in Rome was active. And there's a company, Roman Beast Supplies Inc. So there's an order number 12321. They want the delivery on uh, September 19th of AD 54. And the order is placed on September 12th of AD 54. And the customer is the Emperor Nero. And the products the customer is looking for are lions, tigers, and bisons. He wants 200 lions, 250 tigers, 45 bison. Okay, so this is an example of a sales order. Okay, so now clearly based on this, we can see the many-to-many -many, uh, entity relationship diagram here. You've got order, you've got product, and uh, order has uh, order number is the primary key. Product, unfortunately, this is an error. It should be product ID as the primary key here. I've made a mistake. I'll fix that later. So product ID should be the primary key here. And this is a many-to-many -many relationship. Product has non-obligatory participation. Order, of course, there's no point in having an order if it doesn't have at least one product on it. So this is solid. But you may have some products which nobody has ever ordered. It could be a new product that has yet to be ordered. Or it could be an old product that, for whatever reason, is a failure. It's never been ordered. Okay. And, of course, each order has some quantity of one or more products. Right. In other words, order one is for uh, 200 lions, 300 tigers, 40 bisons. Those 200, 340, that's quantity. Okay. So, it's a many-to-many -many relationship. And we can clearly see that this many-to-many -many relationship is uh, has the attribute quantity, the, the associative entity. We've called this associative entity as order height. Okay, so to go with, with this, every item here on the order is an order item. So that's why we've called the associative entity as order height. Now clearly, an order can have many order items. And a product can also be on many order items. Well, those items will be on different orders, whereas all the order items of a particular order will be on the same order, but that doesn't matter. Each order item is an individual order item, and a product can have many order items. Once again, this is a mistake. This should, there should be a, a primary key notation here. This cannot be an optional attribute. This is a primary key, and therefore, uh, the primary key for order item could be order number, pro order ID, product ID, or order number, product ID, the combination. Therefore, we use key migration. And I've just given some names on the relationship. Okay, so this is fairly straightforward. And quantity, we have put it as an attribute of 
order item. Now another way to look at this same relationship might be, you may say, well, this approach will work. This approach will work only if the same item does not occur more than once on the same order. Right? In other words, I may have an order which says, give me 200 chairs. And somewhere later on, it again says, give me 100 chairs. Right? The same product, you may say, well, why would they do that? Why don't they just say 300 chairs and have one item? Maybe. Okay? But it's possible that in some other situations, they may have them on multiple lines. Perhaps they're saying, give me 200 chairs on this date and 500 chairs on some other date. Okay, so it is possible that the combination may occur more than once. I mean, if that is the case, then we will revise our ERD to show it like this. We'll say I've got order, got order item, okay, and product. Again, this is a mistake. It should be the primary key here. But uh, I made uh, the, 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 I've removed the, the, key migration from product into order item. Instead, I've introduced an order item sequence number. Okay, this is sort of like the number one, two, three here, right? So those are the line numbers for each of the line items. So I've included an order item sequence number, made that part of the key, and now I'm only migrating the order number from the key. Right. So when you when I'm referring to a particular order order item, I'll say uh, order number X, item number three. Okay, so that's uniquely you can identify which item we are talking about. This is another alternative way to represent that same scenario. So what you do, there's no one correct answer to these problems. You have to make some assumptions about how the business operates. Based on that, we arrive at these things. Of course, note the order item sequence number that's been added and also note that I have removed the key migration notation here because the same order number product number combination can probably occur more than once if that is the case then we will not use the two of them together as a key instead we will introduce an order item sequence number and then just use the combination of order number order item sequence number as the key.